Now let's take a look at legal problem called triangle. So given a triangle array, return the minimum path sum from top to bottom. For each step, you might move to an adjacent number of the row below. More formally, if you are on index i on the current row, you might move to either index i or index i plus 1 on the next row. So you can see here, you can we have an example, right? If we're at this index right here, we can either choose to go here or choose to go here. And same thing here, if I worked on this index right here, I can either choose here or this path. But the goal is we want to find the minimum path, uh, the min, uh, the a minimum sum path, a path where it has a minimum sum. So you can see here we have two plus three plus five plus one will give us a minimum sum. But you can't really do it in the greedy way where we choose whoever has the smallest value. In this case, three has the smallest value. Then we can just go down this path and then five has the smallest value. We can go down this path. But there could also be a situation where this is not, let's say this is zero, right? Let's say this is not seven, but this is a zero. And if we choose to go down three, we might not reach this now element right here. So we cannot do it in a greedy way. So we have what we have to do is we have to traverse both options. Once we traverse both options, we can, and then once we backtrack, uh, once those both options reach the bottom and then returns its current value and then returns back to the root recursion stack, we can compare whoever has the smallest path sum. Once we have a smallest path sum for those two options, we're going to take one of them and then add, uh, add the current element's value and return its to its parent stack, right? So if we were to do this using a uh, top-down approach, using dynamic programming, basically the idea is that for each and every single item, we have two choices. We either go this way or this way to find the minimum path sum. And in this case, we have to go both ways. So if I go three, in this case, same thing, I go down, I choose either six or five, right? And then, if, and then for six, I either choose four or I choose one. And for five, I either choose one or eight, right? And same thing here, I can choose to go down this path and this node, this element can choose to go for five or seven and seven have a decision to go for eight or three. And once we reach the bottom, you can see that what we cannot go down, we cannot make any choices anymore because there is no path, right? So what we can do is we can just return its current element's value, which is gonna be four, and return its current val element's value, which is gonna be one. One is smaller than four, right? So therefore, uh, we're just going to uh, return the smallest value plus the current element's value. So current element's value is gonna be six, six plus the smallest element, which is one, right? That's gonna give us the minimum uh, path sum to reach to the bottom, right? To reach to the bottom here. Um, and in this case, we were returning seven because six plus one is seven. Seven, and in, on the other hand, we also have five. And five, uh, in this case, has two options. Either we can get five plus one or five plus eight. So five plus one is six, so we have six here. Six is smaller than seven, so we have six plus three returned back to its parent root, which is nine. And nine, in this case, is going to be uh, one option, and the other option is we can go down the, the path of four, right? In this case, path of four. Uh, we can be able to have two options. In this case, we have three, right? Or we can have eight here, and eight is uh, bigger than three, so we're gonna have three plus seven, which is 10. So we have 10 here, or we can have six here, right? In this case, uh, yeah, in this case, six plus four, which is gonna be 10. So we're returning back 10 to the parent stack. 10 is bigger than nine. In this case, we're just gonna take nine and nine plus two, which is gonna be 11. So 11 therefore give us the smallest or the minimum path sum from the top to the bottom. So you can see here, we're going from the top and all the way do a DFS to uh, search in depth. Once we backtrack and get our minimum path for both options, we're gonna compare. Whoever has the minimum path 
sum will give us the correct path. And we're just going to take that value plus the current element's value, return back to its parent this uh, parent recursion stack. That's going to be that's how we solve this uh, sub problems, right? So in this case, what we can do is because this algorithm will give uh, this algorithm will give us a time complexity of big O of two to the power of n, which is going to be exponential, where n is number of elements that we have in our triangle. So what we can do is we we can cache this uh, in a two D uh, in a two D array, or in other word, kind of like a, a list of hash table or a list of list integers, because we don't know um, how many elements that we have in our each row. Like there's no static value. That's why we have a list of list integer. So we can either do list of list integer or we can do a list of hash table. It doesn't really matter. So what I did here is um, I have a list of hash table. And then in this case, for each key in our table, we have a uh, we, we basically have an integer value that cor uh, that corresponds to a uh, the the computer result, right? For that position, right? For example, for this position right here, I have a pre compute I have a computer result. Save it onto our list of table, right? And then table is basically represents our current row. And then our list is basically represents all the column, uh, all the, sorry, yeah, all the rows that we have, right? So in this case, you can see here, we first define our cache, right? For each row, we're going to have our table. And this table basically is all the elements that we have for each, for the current row. Uh, we initially have empty table, right? And then in this case, we're going to do a DFS. First, we're going to get our current value in our triangle, right? Get the current row, get the current column, we'll get the current value. Then we check to see if this current value is the last row. Because if we get to the last row like this, if we get to the last row, then we cannot, we cannot have, we, we don't, we do not have any more decision to choose. The only decision that we can do is just return back the current value to its parent stack. So in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to have our table, right? So in this case, we get our table for our current row. We check to see if we computed this result. If we didn't compute it, then we're going to compute it here. If we did compute it, we're going to return this current element's value. So if we didn't compute it, we're going to choose to go uh, either the bottom left, right? The bottom left path or the bottom right path. And at the end, we're going to choose the smallest element plus the current element's value. And we're just going to return that to our parent level stack. And at the end, we're just going to continuously do that. And this will give us bring the time complexity down to a big O of n, where n is number of elements that we have in our uh, triangle. And to also give us a space complexity of big O of n as well, right? So let's take a look at how we can optimize this uh, using a bottom up approach. And this bottom up approach basically will give us the opposite way. Right. Instead of going from top to bottom, we're going from bottom to top because for each and every single decision, right? You can see here for each and every single decision here, right? The minimum, the value that we got here is based on the bottom values that we have in our last row, and last row didn't really change at all, right? This is the same values for our last row, and basically for this value is computed based on the previous. Uh, or I should say that the yeah the bottom row, um, bottom left and the bottom right, right. So in this case, four is bigger than one. So we take one plus the current element's value, which will give us the minimum path for this position is going to be seven. So if we were to do it in a bottom up approach, this will some this will look something like this, where we have we have four, right? We have one, we have eight, we have three. For this position, it's going to be the smallest value between those two, right? In this case, it's going to be one, one plus the current element's value, which is six plus one, which give us seven. For this position, it's going to be the minimum value between those two. In this case, it's going to be one, one plus the current element's value, which is going to be five, five plus one is going to be six. The minimum value between those two is going to be three, three plus current element's value is going to be 10. Okay, and then for the upper row, right, this row right here, we're going to compute it based on the previous row, right? So in this case, 
uh, the smallest element between those two is going to be 6. 6 plus the current element's value, which is going to be 3. 3 plus 6 is going to be 9. And 4 plus the smallest el val value between those two, which is going to be 10. So what we're going to do is we're also going to get our upper level. So then what we're going to do is for the last or the the, the first element, right, the top element, in this case, we're going to take the smallest element between those two, in this case, 9. 9 is the smallest, uh, smaller than 10, then 9 plus 2, which is the current element's value, which is going to be 11, right? So the answer is actually resides on the very, very top of the triangle. So at the end, we're just going to return the top element on our triangle. Um, this will give us a time complexity of big O of n, where n is number of elements that we have in our array, but the space complexity in this case, because we can be able to overwrite the entire triangle, right? We're overwriting the value. We don't need another 2D array or like an uh, array to, to um, cache the result. We can basically just overwrite the current list. So this will give us a time complexity of constant. So in this case, this is what the code looks like. Right, we're going to have a size of the triangle, which is n. n. We're going to start from the this level right here, right? So it's going to be the uh, the previous second previous uh, row in our triangle. We're going to start from here, and we're going to use the previous row or the, the the last row of data compute this row of data, and then for this row of data, we're going to use the previous row's data to compute this row's data, and so on and so forth. And same thing. That's what I did here. We gotta get the current row and the previous row. Then we iterate each and every single elements that we have in our current row. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna get the bottom left and the bottom right, right? We're gonna get our bottom left element and the bottom right element. And based on those two elements, we find the smallest, we find the smallest here. Then we're gonna plus the current elements value in our current row, right? So the current row elements is six. 6 plus the smallest, which is 1. 1 plus 6 is going to give us 7. So we save that in our current rows data. So current rows dot set for the current for the current column is equal to the smallest element between the bottom left or bottom right plus the current elements value. Then we're going to continuously do that, work our way all the way to the top of the triangle. And at the end, we're just going to return the top element on our triangle. So this will give us a time complexity of big of n and space complexity of constant. So there you have it and thank you for watching.